City High School in the Pale City School System. Um, this is a great day for our, for our community and for our student athletes. And I'd like to do this before we get too far into it. I'd like to thank a few, few of the following people here. Um, first of all, I want to say a special thank you to Dale Hufford. He acted as our interim head coach. Um, Dale's a great coach, great person, and even a better man. Um, truly appreciate you, Coach. And I'd also like to thank Jennifer Lee for helping bridge the gap for us in our athletic program over the time. Um, and I'll talk more about her later. So um, I'd also like to thank Coach Bill Clark, um, former head um, I'd also like to thank our city officials. They've, they've been very encouraging and supportive through this process. I know we have two of our, two of our city council people here, and Judd Alverson and Ivy McDaniel, and I'd like to thank y'all. And we've, we've had um, various community members that have provided input throughout this process. Um, and I'd say when you get input, you get good and bad input. But at the same time, I'm going to say this, I do appreciate their interest and concern in our program, in our students, and in our community. Because um, that's the only way we can get better is have constructive dialogue. Um, I'd like to thank the best school board in the state of Alabama. Um, we have uh, our school board members with us, uh, our board president, is Mr. Norman Wilder. You stand up, Norman, so we Our Vice President is uh, Joe Sawyer. And we have a uh, board member, Ms. Lori Henderson. Board member, Mr. Greg Crump. And I saved this person for last because he's the longest serving board member in the history of the Pale City School System, Mr. Cecil Fondy. <laughs> and I'm not talking about age, Mr. Fondy. <laughs> but the group that I really want to thank most of all are student athletes um, because through this whole process, you've been in my prayers and my sole focus. Um, Everything that we've done through this process has truly been, been a passion to try to do good for you. And, um, and it's our hope, it's our prayer, and it's our belief that that's going to happen. So thank you. Thank you a bunch. And I truly appreciate you. And I'm, you make me proud every day to be a Pell City Panther. Thank you all. The first people I want to introduce this, uh, this morning um, are interim athletic directors, and our hope and goal is this, is that we're going to remove the interim tag off of these two individuals, and they're outstanding individuals. Uh, the first one that I'm going to introduce, uh, she's been, been the rock of our athletic program. Um, she is the best girls basketball coach I've ever seen. Um, and she's going to be one of the best athletic directors I've ever seen. And that's Miss Jennifer Lee, and I'd like for you to come up. And the next person I want to introduce is also is our interim AD, and our hope again is to remove the interim tag. Um, we're welcoming him home from Pell City class of 1989. He's been on staff at the football program with uh, UAB. Um, and that's Mr. Xavier Robinson. Welcome home. And Coach Lee, since, since you're the one that's been with us for a while, I'm gonna let you be the one that speaks first. Appreciate this, I had no idea. <laughs> Hey guys, 
I have been in this situation now seven different times in the last 14 years as far as a changeover with our football coach. I'm going to say this to you and I need you to listen. It starts with y'all. You got to buy in to being here every single day and working hard. There is no other, it, there's no other ingredients for success. Those two things comes first. You can't have success without that. So y'all need to make a decision today. I'm speaking to y'all as young men because this is going to take you somewhere later in your life when you have to show up for your family and your jobs. But we expect you to show up every day and we expect you to do anything and everything that's asked of you. If you will do those two things, y'all have a chance to be successful. Do you understand? For the rest of the community, I think this is a great moment. I've been waiting on this moment as far as bridging the gap with the city and the school system. I think this is an unbelievable opportunity to do that. I think we all need to get on board with Coach Probst. I think there's no question that he knows football, okay? He should be in the Hall of Fame, and we're going to try to get him there. Thank you. Next person, next person I'm going to ask to speak is um, coming back to Pell City High School is Mr. Xavier Robinson. I'm home. I'd like all the athletes to stand up, please. All the athletes, please stand up. I'm here for you. No hands about everything, I'm here for you. You need me, I met your every need. We're gonna change this program, and we're gonna change it better than it's ever been done before. Thank you. This is for you. As Coach Lee would say, and to the community, my job is to bridge the gap. As for the people, the players, and the community, my job here is to bridge this gap. I'm here for the long haul. I'm coming out of retirement, a short one. <laughs> and I'm honored for the board, Mr. Wilder, Mr. Fonby, everybody on the board, and Dr. Martin. If it hadn't been for them, this wouldn't be, this wouldn't be at all. I'm honored to be back home. Anybody need to talk to me or reach out, contact me. You're gonna see me more with this team, with each of the community, each community, and these players. Young ladies, young men. As old saying I had, we had back at Prattler when I was coaching there, I want that blue map. I want it. And I need y'all to get it. But it's going to take work. Work. Not only on the field, not only on the court, not only on the softball field or baseball field, but also I need you in that classroom. Because if you don't achieve that, you won't achieve nothing in life. Do you understand that? Thank you. On um, the next introduction I'm gonna make and I'm on I'm gonna start start a little bit reverse on this. Um, I wanna welcome back home Miss Stephanie Probst. She's an alumni of Pell City High School. Um, she's probably the most important part of this partnership here, um, but we want to welcome you back home. But with no further ado, I want to introduce you to the next football coach at Pell City High School, Coach Rush Probst.
have to bring me something to drink because my mouth gets dry. Um, you know, 12 years ago, I battled stage four throat cancer and um, it was a tough deal. Uh, no question about it. A lot of people go through these trials and tribulations. So at times, my mouth will get extremely dry still to this day. The good part is I'm over that and way beyond that. Um, first of again, thank you, you're important. Uh, and, and I know you men sitting in front of me, you got to get through this before I talk to you. But again, I want to thank our Board of Education and Dr. Martin, uh, your principal, Ms. Costello, uh, the people at your Board of Education, Dr. Stover. Um, there's several people to thank, but it goes back, and he mentioned this. I don't know that I would be up here without uh, like a younger brother to me, Bill Clark, uh, and his group of people that he, he cultivated in, in a coalition type group of men in this community that care about getting Bell City turned around. Uh, if it wasn't for those men, um, and if I, if I say all their names, I'll forget one, I, I promise you. But, uh, that group, and you, you will meet these men because they're committed to you. They're committed to Pell City. They're committed to this community, uh, very much so. So again, I want to thank him, uh, Bill, and he's not here today, uh, but you'll see him around from time to time. Uh, he, will, he will be around, and he and I will, will work closely together uh, doing the things that we know both uh, he worked for me and I, we worked together in 1987, 1988, and then in 1989, my first head coaching job was at Asheville High School. And he was my first two assistant coaches I hired was Bill Clark and John Ross. And John, you, you, he, John's from this county, he was head coach at Jackson State, he's now at Clemson. So, and then I went to work for Bill at UAB in 2019. So, you will see him around and we're, we're fortunate to have him living in this community and giving his input. Next is, uh, you know, and, and I, I don't want to bring him up here, I'm going to sort of do it on reverse end, is my family. Uh, it's very important. My family is very, very important to me. Um, they're here today. My wife was just introduced. She graduated here in 1988. Um, I have, we have seven children. We have, I have three older children that are not here because of work. Um, Jacob, my 32 year old, or 31 to 32 on April 10th. My two granddaughters and his wife live in South Georgia. He's a graduate of Valdosta High School. And then I have a son, Brian, that's batting right now to be an Army Ranger. He's in the mountain phase of an Army Ranger deal that's uh, very tough. It's uh, 16 days grueling in the mountain phase of Georgia, then he'll go to the Everglades, and, and it's uh, two hours of sleep a night. Every third night, he doesn't sleep, and only has 1,200 calories a day. So he's going through a, a tough deal. Um, Leanne Brooks, uh, she's not approached anymore, and her husband lives in Atlanta. She works for Yamaha. She graduated from Troy University. My other daughter, Taylor Page, is is a graduate from the University of Alabama, and she's here today. And then my younger my younger children, Thomas, is a senior at Piedmont High School. Mary Catherine is a junior at Piedmont High School. And my youngest son, John David, is a sophomore at Piedmont High School. So Mary Catherine and John David will, will come to Bell City in the fall. So I'll bring them up here in a few minutes to uh, talk a little bit more about them. Other people, well, let me, let me get to some other things and I'll, and I'll talk about the rest of my family. There's other family members here that are important to me. Um, I have a brother-in-law that's here, that graduated here at Pell City in 1990 or 91, I can't, I'm trying to remember the date, but uh, he played football here, he played baseball here. My wife marched in a uh, 
this great marching band under Mr. Diffie, um, which at the time and still is one of the best band programs there are in the state of Alabama, that's important to me also. Um, so I have, again, my brother-in-law's here and his fiance, Jolene Golden, who's also from Pell City. Russell's son, Colton Duck, is here today. Um, you know, a nephew of ours, and then we throw all that together, the two special people that have come back to Pell City after 14 years is my two special people, and that's my mother-in-law and my father-in-law. And what they've meant to me over the last 15 years, I, I can't measure what they did for me and my family. Because when I was at work, and my wife's at work all day, all night, they were raising our kids for us. They moved to us in South Georgia in 2008, 2009, and they was with our, by our side the whole time. So bringing them back home to me was special. And I think being back in Phil City will be a, a great experience for them in the latter chapters of their life. And so with me saying all that, I felt like that coming to Phil City, I feel very strong that this is possibly my last chapter in my coaching career. And when this job came available, Bill Clark and I talked about this all the way back over a year ago. And then in December here, and I sat down and talked about this at a hunting lodge in South Georgia. And as time went on and the job came open, then, you know, we came after it. So um, I think it was important for, for a lot of reasons, but guys, if you'll know my career, and you look at my career and where I've been. Um, I started in Asheville, you know, I grew up in Ohatchee, Alabama. I played, played there and then went to school and played at Jackson State University. And then, you know, being a head coach at Asheville to Eufaula, to Mobile, to Hoover High School, and then to Colquitt County, Georgia, Valdosta, Georgia, and then the real special place to me, real special place to me, is where I'm coming from. And that's Coosa Christian School in Gadsden, Alabama. They're here today. My principal, Amanda Justice, her husband, Jack Justice, and the head football coach, Mark O'Brien. They're here to support me. I think it's unprecedented for them or, or people that you're leaving to come and support a man that has left their program. I will never forget them. I will never forget what they did for me. They will always have a special place in my heart. They're good Christian people. And I, I love every moment I was there. Every single moment I was there. And I will go back there Monday when they resume school and, and talk with their players. But guys, talking to you um, about what the future holds, you know, I can sit here and tell you a lot of things. But words, you're going to forget a lot of that. You know, it, it's about your actions. Me and one particular board member talked about that, and he is so true in his, on his thoughts on that. He is exactly right. It's about your actions. Those actions show the true person you are, not what you say. And I think in society today, especially in our youth today, because of social media and because of the things that, and it's not all good, is that you have to really work on being personal and being able to sit down and have a conversation with people, looking people in the eye, and, and say what you believe, and then stand beside it. And again, your actions have to back up your words. But people's going to ask you, people's going to ask me, well, how many games are you going to win? You don't give them a number. You just don't. 
I don't talk about winning seasons either. I don't talk about, you know, goals. I'm not, there's only one goal in football. One goal in football on the field. And there's a lot of goals, but there's only one on the field. And that's to be a state champion, period. And that's the only thing you'll hear me talk about. When will that happen? I can't tell you that. I don't know that. I get people that looked at my career and said, well, you did this here, you did that there. Well, understand this. There were several schools I went to that we didn't win a state championship. There's some I went to that we did. At one school, we won it the second year. The other school, it took us seven years. So there's no time frame on winning a state title. It's hard. There's no doubt about it. But there's things that you got to do to achieve that, and it takes it takes patience. It takes time. And and we we'll have to develop a. People ask, well, how have you won? And I tell people it's because we've outworked people. There's no magic wand. There's no quick fix. You know, a seventh grade player here will be just as important as a senior in my opinion. You have to develop a edge throughout your school to get everybody bought in and as Miss Lee said, she's exactly right. And so don't think there's gonna be a quick fix on anything. But I promise you this everywhere I've been, we've we've turned it around. Y'all think of Hoover, because you don't know much about South Georgia. But at Hoover, people think Hoover's always won. It has not. It has not. They were four and six, three and seven, four and six, just with no success. And then we turned it around. We didn't make the playoffs first year. But once we won a state title, guess what? Everybody started winning in our school. Of the 19 sports, we won a state championship in 18 of them while I was there. And so we were all sports. We won all sports trophy seven or eight of the nine years I was there. So it's not just all about football. It's about everybody pulling together for one purpose. Because our our MO, so to speak, for our basketball team should be the same for football. Our cheerleaders, all our extracurricular, all have the same goal. And so, with all that being said, you know, and I and I, you'll hear me say a lot of things in the coming weeks. But um, again, it goes back to actions. And and I think that. Um, you know, the one thing I am proud of, and I told our people during the interview process, that in my years as head coach from, we've had 250, I've, I've had 256 kids sign football scholarships. 256. That's important to me. Because in a lot of places, you, Kids had no means to go to college without football. And so my son, Thomas, signed a football scholarship back in February at West Georgia College. That's just as important as playing at West Georgia it is, is playing at Alabama. Every player, every player, if you buy into our program, will have a shot to achieve your goals. I went through a six-year run in Georgia, where every senior starter signed a football scholarship. Every senior starter. Now, if you're a mother of a fourth, fifth, or sixth grader, it's amazing how those parents would come to those parent meetings and push their kids to play football because they saw that as a way to go to school and not have thirty, forty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of student loans. And so 
And it is true, Division II football, you don't get a full scholarship to start with. You have to earn a scholarship. Sometimes I'm not sure that's not the best way anyway because of what's going on in college football today. Um, I want to say this in closing, too, is that you'll get my very best. You will do that. You will get my very best. Because my job is to make you believe. That's my job. It's to make you believe. Because here's why, from day one, I believe this. To be big, you got to think big. If you're going to be a champion, we must treat you like a champion. And I've always believed that. That if you, if you make them believe that they're a championship caliber group, then they'll perform it a lot better. If you go in here and say, you know, that you don't have talent, or you don't have this, you don't have that, you're not here to say that. Never. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that. So at the end of the day, it's about what you put into it. And we'll do it together. We'll do it together. And here's the other thing. I will surround you with the best coaches in this state and in the state of Georgia or in this country that I know. I've had 35 assistant coaches that have worked for me become college football coaches. 35. Two of them. Three of them have become head football coaches in college. And one of them is coaching in the NFL. So I've been able, if, you know, people want to talk about rush folks, but it's not, again, it's not me. It's not me, guys. It's the people we surround ourselves with here to give you the best opportunity to win. You will have good coaches around you. There'll be coaches that you have right now, they'll be a big part of this success going forward. There'll be other coaches that will come in, and you will be able to see right off the bat that these guys are top notch and that they have your best interest. Because if they don't think like I do when it comes to that and developing the whole person, then I'm not going to hire them. They're going to be important involved in your academics, involved in your spiritual life, involved in your social well-being. If you need a ride home, if you got a problem, my door is always open. You, I can't, there's not enough molecules in here of the people that I've brought into my office over a 41-year period that I've counseled and I've talked to. And to me, that was more important than the football part of it. Your life's important to me. Your life after football is important to me. And so we, 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 we're going to do this, and it's not going to be all about football. It's going to be all about development of a human being. And so at the end of the day, will I be hard on you? Yes. There's no doubt. And, it, and I know you can go Google me, and you can go look at Netflix and find all that stuff you want to. But at the end of the day, that's, that's small snippets of really what it's all about. And so at the end of, you, you won't find anybody that will love you no more than I do, or my wife, or my family. Because guess what? You are my family. You are my family. And I treat you like my family. I have four, four sons and three daughters. You will see in that field house how you're supposed to treat women. You will see how I treat my daughters. You will see how I treat my wife. And I expect you to treat girls the same way. Now you may see my wife hit me over the head a couple of times, but, uh, but that's, that's part of it too. And I, and I think I just think you need to understand that development of young men will be a huge part in your development as a football player. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say too is it takes everybody to build a football program. Everybody. I've been a head baseball coach for seven years. Been a head basketball coach. 
He took two teams to the state championship game. A better track coach. Been in the, been the top three. When we were at Asheville, we could finish either second state or third state. We couldn't have enough athletes to beat UMS Wright or St. Paul. Been involved in winning state championship in tennis. Girls tennis on top of that. I love tennis. It's probably my second favorite sport. But it, it's everybody. It's not just our football program. And I, I, I want to see our football players go to basketball games. I want to see our football players go to baseball games. I want to see other athletes come to y'all's game. I think that's crucial with student involvement. It is. But it takes a lot. It takes our city. It takes so many different facets of people and groups to help football win. It's a business in a lot of ways, guys. It's a business. And if you don't treat it like a business, then you won't have the type of success that we need to have. So it's going to take a lot to build this program. And I'm excited about it because you have been down, and this is right down my alley. It's right down my alley. When you Tell you what you do. You go, if you want to Google something, don't go Google every place that I've gone what our record was the first year. So, and then you'll understand there's no quick fixes. Okay? Um, with that being said, I want my wife to come up. Seth, Thomas, John David, Mary Catherine. Let's go. Taylor, where are you at? You want to speak? <laughs> Again, my older children, because of the work schedule, Leanne, my daughter in Atlanta, was coming, but they were unscheduled. She works for Yamaha. Um, and she couldn't get out of the meeting. And then, of course, my oldest son, Jacob, works for the biggest pine tree company in the southeast. Um, and there, this is a busy time for the year of them, too, and his wife started a new job. So, you know, we talked about Brian being somewhere in the North Carolina. But uh, this is my family. I would like for Russell, Jolaine, Colton to stand up, please. <laughs> that's that's his in law, his fiance, and my nephew, and then the two most important people in this room is my father in law, Mr. Wayne Duck, and my mother in law, Mr. Judy Duck. Would y'all please stand? <laughs> but I know we're glad to be home, and uh, I'm glad to make this my final home, to be quite honest with you. Like I said, I started at Asheville as a head coach. Uh, I'd like Bill City to be my last home. So without any questions, does anybody have any questions at all? I know the media is going to ask me a few things, but uh, uh, but appreciate you coming. Dr. Martin, anything? Players, one thing I will tell you, I'm probably not going to meet you today because I know it's prom. I know y'all getting out of school. There's a lot going on today. Being spring break, I get it. That's why I'm always canceling workouts on that last day before spring. But uh, when we get back on April 10th, I will I'll address you more as a group, give you some expectations, sort of where we're going. Uh, I'm very informative about things. I like to keep you abreast. There'll be a calendar. Your parents will know. We'll have a parent meeting. You know, I'll get to know your parents. I'll get to know you better. And then as I go through this process, because it is a process. Y'all hear Coach Saban talking about a process? Trust me, for 41 years that I've done this, it is a process. And there's a lot to do. So um, um, actually, I'm going to go to the clinic in Alabama next week. So without anything else, I'm going to turn it back to
again, I would like to, uh, I'm excited uh, with Coach Lee, um, Xavier Robinson, Coach Probst. I'm excited to have y'all in Pell City. I know our community is excited and they welcome you with open arms, um, you and your families. Um, also, I will say this again, I can't, can't say enough about this. Just thank you to everybody through this process. And I will say also when you, when you go through a, a coaching search, I made the comment to somebody this morning, um, Coach Probst, I hope this is the last coaching search I do in my career uh, because my hair is getting a lot thinner on top and I, and I don't, and I think if I have to go through another one, what little I have left will be totally gray. Um, but I will say this, I thank the community for their interest, their input, but most of all, I thank our students. I thank you for hanging in there. I thank you for believing. Um, and my goal is this, is for us to get better every day. If you're not getting better every day, you're getting worse. Um, and I know that Coach Probst talked about Alabama, but I think everybody in here knows I'm an Auburn grad, so uh, so I'm not going I'm not going to say too much about the process. Um, somebody made a comment this morning at the board meeting when I put my diet coat down. They said you look like Saban. I kind of got worried, but. Uh, but I want to say this is uh, thank y'all and thank all of you for being here. I know that Ms. Costello is going to give us uh, some direction as far as our students. Um, so if you would come up and give us some direction as far as our students and then the, the rest of us, if you want to hang around and speak with Coach Probes, uh, Xavier, or Coach Lee, I know they'll be available after.